Okay. Wow. Wow. What a sleep. What a sleep. A fun sleep. All that I want is one slate. And it's just, again, just more confirmation, right? I, I know I'm a broken record. It's just more confirmation. There's no one that runs worse. It, it's just, it's not possible. I, again, I know I sound like a broken record. It's just unbelievable at this point. Absolutely unbelievable. Mitchell ejected. I take Luca over assists. He gets injured. I take I absolutely nuke Emmanuel quickly over 19 and a half PRA. Right when the news dropped, his line got bumped to like 28 and a half PRA. He had 17, I think, PRA at half and did not go over. I will now be sleeping on the streets thanks to Emmanuel quickly. Uh, and then. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Aaron Naismith chalk. Hoo-wee. Wow. I am so incredibly happy for everyone that played Aaron Naismith. Wow. What an awful play at his ownership. And he goes like 10 for 10 from three, career high with Halliburton back to bail out the fish. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And then the people that fell asleep at the wheel and didn't pivot to get quickly in. I mean, quickly was close to 100% in high stakes because the sharks knew to play them. But the, the, some of the fish that fell asleep at the, whale, at the wheel got bailed out because quickly did nothing in the second half. Did nothing. And the extremely tilting part about this all is I had a Nuggets Warrior stack. I had Poole, I had Jokic, I had Bruce Brown. Didn't matter. Another injury. Another one. Another one. Again, it's absolutely nuked. Emano quickly pair, right? Just incinerate my money. Incinerate like 500 bucks today. Woo! I love losing money. There's just no one that runs. There's just no. What well, I take Io, Io to Sumu, under nine and a half points. Check it. Uh, check it's like the first five minutes of the Bulls game. All right, let's see what let's see what's going on in this game. He has ten points. Every time I take an under and one of those like secondary Bulls, they turn into Michael Jordan. Unreal slate. Unreal. I just incinerated, incinerated my mind. Unreal. All right, well, let's just get into this slate. Maybe we can avoid injuries and ejections on this slate. I don't know. Maybe, just maybe, we can get one slate. It. All right, Portland, Washington is the first game here. Uh, no Nurkic. Jeremy Grant is questionable. Could have some value here, definitely. Uh, we will already have value. So Drew Eubanks will start at the five. I think he's a good value. 
He'll split the center uh, position with Trent and Watford, who I also like at 3-3. So like Eubanks, like Watford, I think Eubanks is a little bit safer, but Watford's got the power forward eligibility. He'll play the backup five. Dame, I mean, he's been playing extremely well and for 72 last game. But when I play Dame, you better believe 38 fancy points he got me. That's what he got me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I like Dame. Good matchup here. If Grant's out too, I mean, Simons and Hart are going to look, be- look a little bit better. I think no one will play Josh Hart after what he did last game. Five fancy points in 32 minutes. But Josh Hart, normally a guy that has a relatively high floor because he can contribute in a lot of different ways. So like, you have to have short-term memory. If there's no Grant, I'm fine going back to Hart. Simons would look solid as well. Um, and then if Jeremy Grant's out, you're going to get more run just for guys like Nasir Little, Shaden Sharp, and Gary Payton. You did see Gary Payton play 29 minutes last game. Uh, his most by far this season. So uh, I do have some interest in a min price. Peyton Nasir Little could possibly start. He would be playable, but not the best point per minute guy. And Shaden Sharp also probably sees a little bit more run in that scenario. On the Washington side, basically fully healthy team. I have interest in Porzingis, but he most likely won't start at the five with Gafford back. Still like his upside though. Kuzma, Beal, more secondary plays. Denny coming off the bench, I still think probably sees high 20s to low 30s minutes. Makes him a fine option. He's been playing really well. This group of Monty Morris and DeLon Wright and Kendrick Nunn are playable. They're all going to kind of split the point guard duties. You'll see some some minutes for Kendrick Nunn at the two. Gafford should start if he can stay out of foul trouble. I mean, he's a, a viable option, but his minutes should tick down with Porzingis back. Let's move on to Sacramento and the Pacers. So no deer and Fox. I cannot wait to lose some money with Davion Mitchell. Who's with me? We're going to get Davion Mitchell starting. He's going to play 32 minutes. He's going to give us eight fancy points. I cannot wait for that to happen. Yeah, with De'Aaron Fox out, I, we should get uh, Davion Mitchell in the starting lineup. He's been awful, horrific in his starts this year. But he's a flat min price point guard with shooting guard eligibility. Um, I'm fine going to him. I think we probably see 25 to 30 minutes from Mitchell. I think he's a good value. Uh, hopefully he doesn't go for five fantasy points in 30 minutes like he's done like literally a couple of his starts. A uh, Sabonis gets a bump. I think he looks really good. Revenge game narrative. He'll be popular, but for good reason. The wings look a little bit better with Herder, Barnes, and Keegan Murray. And you probably get Malik Monk in that like mid to high 20s minute range. He's played actually over 30 minutes back to back games and has played well. Again, the ceiling's just massive on Monk. So, and he's still at a reasonable price point. And then you might get some minutes for Terrence Davis. Um, I don't think he'll start, but if David Mitchell starts, then you might get a little bit of run for Terrence Davis. I don't think it's enough for me to get to him, though. On the Pacers side, so I was shocked how many minutes Halliburton played tonight in his first game back. It's not updated, but he played like close to 40 minutes, which is wild. It's a back-to-back, so we'll see um, if he's available. If he is, then I like some Halliburton, um, who's clearly not on a limit tonight. And then my favorite tournament play, I mentioned him as, as one of my favorite tournament plays of the slate tonight. Miles Turner absolutely went off, too. I was tilted because I was leaving flexibility for that Warriors situation, which is a complete mess. Steve Kerr is the, the absolute woke, man. Steve Kerr is the absolute woke. Rules him in. No one thinks Draymond and Steph's going to play. Rules him in. And then Draymond gets scratched like two minutes before lock. I lo- like I had Draymond in my lineup. So I luckily got it in just in time. But, I mean, Kerr's the woke, man. Uh, you guys know he's been right at the top of my list for a long time. Long time. Um, but yeah, assuming Halliburton plays outside of, of him and Turner, not a ton that stands out. I don't think we can expect Aaron Naismith to set a career high when he's way over owned again. Just wild, man. Wild. I mean, he's averaging with Halliburton out, he's averaging like 15 fancy points a game. And then he's chalk on this slate and he goes for like 40 fancy. It's just so incredibly dumb. I uh, that. I mean, the start of the night off with just a massive tilt. And all the Sharks knew, too. I, mean, I retweeted everyone. Everyone was super upset about Naismith. He was one of the worst plays of the slate and bailed out the fish that went there. So incredibly tilted about that. Uh, Charlotte and Detroit. Uh, Lamella Ball is 9.7K. He got ejected as well tonight, um, but he should play close to 40 minutes. A good matchup like him. Rogier is fine. Their front court's decent with Plumlee and Washington. Um, Hayward's still not playing a ton of minutes right now. Mark Williams is a good point per minute backup that should play 15 to 20 minutes. He's a decent play for the Detroit side. They're not playing at guys like a ton of minutes right now, but Donovan should be the one guy in a competitive game. I would think he's mid thirties minutes. So like his ceiling in tournaments, but 
you know, with Killen Hayes coming off the bench, they're kind of limiting the minutes on Ivy too. Like he probably sees around 30 minutes, makes him playable. Hayes coming off the bench, a little bit tough to prioritize. He played 29 minutes last game, but there was Ivy foul trouble. Sadiq Bay probably sees around 30 minutes, just indifferent on him. Duran, Stewart, they're going to split the center minutes, which makes it a bit tricky to prioritize either. I think my favorite option, assuming he continues to start, would be Alec Burks. Um, he's got the shooting guard eligibility and should play around 30 minutes. But that's it for Detroit. Moving on to Phoenix and Boston. 11. 11. 11. 1. 1. 11. But. Hold on, right? Because when he's massive truck and I fade, overtime and a 60 bomb. But when I buy in, one of the best matchups out there, 11. 11. There is blowout risk here. Still no Devin Booker. But in a competitive game, the offense should be Paul, Aiton, and Bridges. They're all fine tournament plays. Cam Johnson's been quiet of late. Torrey Craig should see mid-20s minutes. There's nothing that really stands out for me on the Phoenix side. On the Boston side, not a ton here either. Tatum 11K, Brown 8-8. Eh, eh. We can still get to those guys, but neither are priorities. They're just fine. Brogdon, I mean, he outside of last game, which was a massive blowout, he had been averaging the mid-30s minutes. A fair tournament play, as is Derek White. There's nothing on the, the Boston lineup that really stands out. Rob Williams does some foul trouble, only played 19 minutes. But, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of, like, secondary plays. Like, if you land on any of these guys, that's fine. But there's no one here that stands out to me. Orlando and Minnesota. So Orlando been running a little bit of a tighter rotation of late. If they continue to do that, then I like the main guys, Bancaro, Franz, Carter, and Fultz. Like you saw like 36 minutes uh, for, for Bancaro and Franz last game. You saw 33 minutes for Carter Jr. Uh, Markel Fultz played 30 plus minutes again. So if they're going to like run this tighter rotation, then I kind of like the main guys here uh, in a decent spot against Minnesota. Um, Cole Anthony's 4-7. Minutes have ticked down on him a bit. Of late, they've ticked up on Jalen Suggs, so a little bit uh, tricky for me to feel great about it, but the upside's still there for him in tournaments. Again, Jalen Suggs' minutes have slowly increased. He played 26 minutes last game. If he continues to play mid-20s minutes at a 3.6K price point, I think he stands out as a pretty good value. The only downside is he's only point guard eligible. Um, Gary Harris should start, should play high 20s minutes. He's fine. Um, again, I played him last late as a pivot off Isaiah Joe and Jalen Noel. Worked out, but again, it didn't matter because, oh yeah, 11 11. Also, had to get, you know, it's it's not a good night when I when I end up at Chipotle. Thankfully, they had guac. Thankfully. There's been a couple times where I'm on absolute full tilt mode, go to Chipotle, and there's no guac. And that, that is the worst. Let me tell you that. That is the worst. Um, all right, let's move on to Minnesota. So Gobert, questionable. I mean, he was questionable for like five straight games and played and then just like sat. So like, I just don't know. I don't know what's going on here. If he plays, I like him. If he misses, you jam Nas Reed, who is an absolute must for me, as long as he stays out of foul trouble. Um, so love Nas if Gobert's out. Ant and D'Lo are going to play a ton. It's a good matchup. They're both totally fine spend-ups at the top. Slow-mo should continue to play around 30 minutes. Um, a guy that can stuff the stat sheet. McDaniels is viable. Not a ton else here. I mean, Noel was popular lastly. I didn't really get that, but he'll play probably high teens minutes. Move on to Toronto and Houston. So uh, Toronto's a really good spot here. No OG. You should get Precious continuing uh, to start. Precious dealt with a little bit of foul trouble. Did only play 25 minutes. Was a bit concerning, but still have interest in Precious. Assuming he starts, still think he's a solid option. Siakam been really quiet of late and only has the center eligibility, which is tough, but... Like, one of these games, you're going to get a big Siakam game. Maybe it's this game, but it's been the Fred Van Fleet show of late. He went for 73 fancy points last game. He's been absolutely smashing. Obviously, I, I, I like Fred Van Fleet. We'll see what the ownership is on him. Also, Scotty Barnes playing extremely well, too. Playing huge minutes. Um, no issue going to, to him. Gary Trent Jr. should play mid-30s minutes. I'm fine with him. And then my boy, Chris Boucher, most likely continues to see, you know, high teens, low 20s minutes. A good point per minute guy. Always someone I like for tournaments because if he finds his way to more minutes, he could crush. On the Houston side, so you saw Shingoon have a uh, pretty bad game. Did only play 33 minutes, though. Before that, he'd been playing like mid to high 30s minutes. So I still like Shingoon. 
I'm kind of at an off game. We'll see what the ownership is. He was really popular last night and was a bust. So I wonder if recency bias might keep his ownership a little bit lower than it should be. And keep an eye on Jabari Smith because if he's out, we can go to my boy who you see what happens when he gets minutes. Oh, wait. He only played 19 minutes last game. And he went for 50 fantasy points. 50. So if Jabari Smith is out, I really like Tari Eason. Now, be careful here. If Jabari Smith is in, I'm not really interested in Eason because he's not going to play alongside Jabari Smith pushing Goon in there. And Eason will most likely only play about, you know, high teens minutes off the bench. So be very, very careful if Jabari Smith is in. He'll probably be over-owned by uh, the Fish, but the Sharks will know to not play Eason if Jabari Smith is in. So that's, I would not play Eason if Smith is in. Um, if Smith is out, then fire up Tari's. Okay. Uh, KJ Martin, he'll continue to start and play around 30 minutes. Reasonable price point. I like Eric Gordon a good amount with, with the two guards out. He, his floor plus ceiling goes up a bit. He becomes one of the primary playmakers. I still like Eric Gordon. They've been starting Knicks. He actually had a decent game last game. First decent game in a while. Really not a good point for a guy, but if he's going to continue to play, you know, high 20s to low 30s minutes, he's playable. Jay Sean Tate, they're just not playing him more than 20 minutes right now, so I don't know why, really. Um, Christopher getting some backup run, but not like I wish they would just start Christopher at the point because he's the much better point from the guy of the two between him and Knicks, but they are set on starting Knicks for some reason. All right, final couple games here, Philly and San Antonio. Last few times they've listed Embiid as questionable, so I assume he'll play. Um, if that is the case, it's mainly Embiid and Harden that I like, and then secondary options with guys like Harris and, and Maxi. Beads out, then you know what I'm going to say, right? Harden looks amazing. Harris and Maxi look a lot better. Um, Harrell, if he starts, looks great. Then you can look to Paul Reed. It's just the same same thing every day with Philly. It's just like they're a very boring team to talk about for DFS. Now, on the Spurs side, again, I took Trey Jones over uh, five and a half assists that previous game. He had four assists in nine minutes and got injured. It, it just, it just no one, no one, no one runs worse. No one. Hurdle finally smashes when I don't have him. So, so happy for him. Also, I don't know if you guys saw another absolute masterclass uh, game for Chetty Osman. But when I played multiple times Chetty Osman with no Donovan Mitchell at like 1%, busted both times, finally faded, set a career high 29 points, and then faded tonight, he went for a 40 bomb. So just wanted to say how incredibly happy I am for Chetty Osman. There's no tilt whatsoever from me. No way. That's not me. We don't tilt on this channel. Well, Trey Jones out. I would guess they start Malachi Branham. Branham played uh, 32 minutes last game. So if he does start, I like some Branham. And then you should get a little bit more run for a guy like Josh Richardson as well, who played uh, 29 minutes. So those two benefit the most of Trey Jones out. Keldon Johnson, Jakob Pertle, still like their ceiling. They're, they're obviously his massive foul risk for Pertle if he goes up against Embiid. If you think he gets in foul trouble, you can look to Zach Collins at 4.5K. Um, Bates Diop uh, did get the start once again. He put 27 minutes. He's fine value. But I would say mainly it would be those cheap guards, Branham and Richardson, that I like with Trey Jones, most likely out. And finally, Atlanta, going up against Utah. Um, I like the ceiling on Trey Young. I like the, she- the ceiling on DeJounte Murray. It was a massive blowout last game. But both guys, I think, are at reasonable price points. I like the front court, too, with uh, Collins and Capella. You should get high 20s minutes for, Cap- for Capella. You should get, you know... Low 30s minutes for Collins. McDonavich feels a little bit pricey coming off the bench. DeAndre Hunter um, should play mid 30s minutes. He's always just like a fine filler option for me. And then Okongu will continue to play the backup five. I mean, he's a relatively decent value play. Um, so I'm fine with that. He'll play, you know, close to 20 minutes. And finally, Utah. I think Markinen makes a pretty good play in both formats. Just feels a bit of, a little bit too cheap. For the guy that should play uh, mid to high 30s minutes. Uh, so like Laurie Markinen, I think. Uh, Clarkson and Conley are both pretty safe and at reasonable price points. You're, sh- you're going to get most likely around, you know, 32 minutes for Clarkson, probably the same for Conley. Like the matchup for him. I, I think both Jazz guards look pretty good. Walker Kessler blocked like 22 shots last game. Um, he played 30 minutes too. He's viable in tournaments. He's kind of been up and down a bit of late, but um, he's been playing very, very well. Malik Beasley, yeah, again, in playing GPPs. Minutes kind of fluctuate on him, but he's at a fair price point. Sexton playable off the bench should be a relative value player when he's on the court. 
Don't know if I can get to anyone else. Vanderbilt, minutes have not been great on him. The minutes have ticked down on Kelly Olenek as well. So that is going to do it for the slate, guys. Um, maybe we can avoid injuries and foul trouble one time. I don't know. But I appreciate your support. And for everyone watching, as always, we'll see you in the next one.